She's not exciting, she's not radical, and some say she has no vision. But there's one thing German Chancellor Angela Merkel definitely is. An icon of stability. The stabilizing force. The symbol of stability. A symbol of stability, not just in her own country, but internationally too. Merkel is currently serving her fourth term in office, leading the country for 15 years. During that time, she's dealt with countless world leaders, including three different American presidents and five British prime ministers. Not to mention the many events that have changed the world since she took office. So how did mighty Merkel stay in power for so long? And what happens when she leaves? Let us unpack that for you. To understand Merkel's firm grip on power, we have to understand the political system she has mastered. Germany has federal elections every four years, but citizens do not directly vote for the chancellor. Instead, they elect representatives and parties to parliament, the Bundestag. Those Bundestag members are the ones that decide who becomes chancellor. More than half of them have to agree. The leader of the biggest party in parliament usually becomes chancellor, but reaching an agreement on that can be very tricky. Germany has several significant parties. It's unusual for any one of them to have the majority needed to decide alone. So they have to enter into coalitions to elect a chancellor and form a government. Well, the reason for this is to ensure that no one is really pushed outside the political competition. No one party is really put into a position so it can completely dominate the political system. But there are no limits on how many times Parliament can choose the same individual to lead the country. So to lead Germany all this time, Merkel has had to do a juggling act. Secure her party's position at the top of the polls and her own position at the top of the party. Here's how she did it. Merkel's political success is often attributed to how well she deals with crises. But there's also another story to tell, one of consensus building and a centrist approach that benefited her party for years. Over the past decade and a half, Merkel's conservative CDU and sister party CSU, known together as the Union, formed governing coalitions with different parties. And as party leader, Merkel steadily shifted her bloc towards the center. During Merkel's first term, her government created new child care provisions. Then she ended mandatory military conscription. And following the Fukushima disaster in Japan, there were mass protests against nuclear power in Germany. Merkel obliged and decided to phase out nuclear energy much earlier than planned. Merkel adopting many liberal ideas showed she was willing to listen to public opinion, even if it sometimes went against her bloc's conservative tradition. Her pragmatism proved popular. By 2013, she had taken the union's share in parliament to historic levels. Her own approval ratings were almost always high. There seemed to be no stopping Merkel and her party. A joyful roar greeted Angela Merkel at the headquarters of her CDU party in Berlin. The most popular elected politician in Germany. The vote was a formality, with the ruling parties holding an overwhelming majority. Now, Merkel was personally delivering election victories at the doorstep of her own bloc. The flip side of this is that there was very little debate within her own party over which course to take as she took the party more and more towards the center ground. But that liberal approach hasn't always worked. One step Merkel took was notably more radical than others, and it ultimately backfired for her party. During the so-called European migration crisis, 
The chancellor let in over a million asylum seekers into the country. We have so much done. We can do Initially, many Germans were welcoming. But then the mood changed. Gegen Flüchtlinge, gegen Politiker, gegen Journalisten. In the following election, her bloc lost 65 parliamentary seats. And the AFD, a party that campaigned on an anti-immigration platform, entered parliament for the first time. With 94 seats. Critics say that by taking her bloc too far into the center, Merkel had created room for the far right. The AFD moved in to fill that space. But it's also important to remember that this didn't signal a complete rejection of her years-long centrist approach. The union still led in the polls. And despite all of the criticism, Merkel remained her party's leader. Here's how she got there and stayed there. Merkel rose to prominence when she publicly ousted her party's political giant, Helmut Kohl. It put her in a position to take over the party. Once in charge, Merkel's approach to keeping power was different, but just as decisive. Merkel is very power conscious, but she doesn't seek or even enjoy power confrontations. She showed in the past, time and time again, that it's a very effective method to simply ignore your opponents and let them use their confrontational energy until basically their political time is up. She's notorious and actually rather elegant when it comes to shifting competition sideways or upwards. This kept Merkel unopposed at the top of her party for years. But experts say it may have also created problems for the future. Once the debate started about who could succeed her, the party simply didn't have the kind of character politicians ready to go to fill her ever-growing political shoes. This became clear after Merkel announced she would not be seeking a fifth term in office in 2021, and in preparation, stepped down from her party's leadership. The CDU's choice of successor was no surprise. Annegret kram karrenbauer known as AKK, was so aligned with the Chancellor that she was dubbed Mini Merkel. Yet she fell at the first hurdle. AKK failed to rein in a regional party branch, accused of breaking a political taboo and working with the far-right AFD. This destroyed her credibility, her ambition to become Chancellor, and continue leading the party. With that episode, the question of who will succeed Merkel and what happens to her party once she leaves became urgent again. In February 2020, Merkel's bloc was polling at just 27%. Then the coronavirus pandemic. Merkel's level-headed response helped Germany face the crisis and left her bloc strong. By June, it was polling at 39 points. But the question of who will succeed her as party leader is still wide open. There are currently three men in the race. A prominent would-be leader, Friedrich Matz, is a former Merkel rival who she sidelined from the party years ago. He's vowed to take Merkel's bloc back to its conservative roots. But regardless of who comes next and what direction they take, Germany and the world will be watching. Being compared to Mighty Merkel will be part of the job. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Unpacked. If you're interested in more insights about Angela Merkel, be sure to check out Merkel's Last Dance. It's a podcast hosted by Michaela, who was interviewed in this video. 
It offers a deeper dive into the Chancellor's 15 years in office. We'll put a link in the comments below. And as we briefly touched on in this video, 2021 is going to be a big year for German politics. The country is going to have a federal election. Let us know what kind of coverage you'd like us to do about that topic.